What's going on everybody? Uh, Edward here, Old Place Outdoors. Got a buck here that I want to uh, go through something with you guys about. Um, I see a lot of stuff on social media about caping a deer out and um, I'm, I'm not going to say there's a um, right or wrong way, but there's a couple different methods on caping a deer out for taxidermy purposes. And uh, I'm going to show you my method, what I like to do. And I'm up here uh, skinning this thing alone, so I'm going to do the best I can to stay out your way. But this is the the way that I do it. And it, it any taxidermist I think that you take it to would be uh, really pleased with the way it's caped out. Uh, I know I would. But um, with that being said, it's uh, for me it's a lot simpler than trying to make some extra cuts. And uh, you know you got enough hide there. So we're going to get going with it. And like I said, I'm going to try to stay out your way. So the first thing you want to do, get down here about where the joint is. And go ahead and make you an incision. Just go all the way around. You don't have to be real pretty. Nice quick cut. Just make sure you got all the hide separated. Same thing on the other side. Find the joint. You get down that low, you pretty much, if you're doing a pedestal mount, whatever you're doing, you're going to have enough hide. No questions asked. Now, a lot of guys will split down through there. I don't do that. I'm going to show you what I do real quick. This boy is roughed up. He's already been just all calloused up. So what I'm going to go ahead and do now is just make an incision, get way back here. My rule of thumb on this is I like to say, all right, so here's your shoulder, get you about a hand length, and then go another hand length, then you got plenty. Like I said, if you want to do a pedestal mount, you got plenty if you get way back here. So go ahead, you're going to get a little hair in the meat, no big deal. One, if you got like a gut hook like I got here, you can get in there, zip it on around. We're going to do a whole incision all the way around. Come back this way. Jumped out of the track there. It's a lot easier when you have somebody holding on to them for you, but I don't have that luxury tonight. Now at this point, get all that hair off my knife there. I'm just going to start opening them up. Like I said, there's a couple different ways I see people recommend doing it. This is just what I like to do. It basically creates like a a sweater or a t-shirt type effect on the deer. And then I can, as a taxidermist, I can go in there and clean up or cut off what I don't think I need. But I'd much rather have that available to me than to not. It's kind of like Kind of like what I say about having a concealed carry. It's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. So, there you go. You got to be real careful. Just a tip. You can see I already went through there. No big deal. I'm way far back. But right here in this brisket, the skin gets a little bit thinner than some of the other areas. So, you want to be a little bit more meticulous when you get in there. Make sure you don't cut through. As you'll see, I'm starting to expose this shoulder. Getting down in there. Same thing with that brisket. All this skin is a lot thinner. It'll You'll cut through it real quick if you're not careful. Just basically what you want to do is separate that membrane. Keep, keep it on the carcass itself. 
and just going to keep on working all the way around, back and forth, back and forth. Now once you get on down here, and you've opened these shoulders up a good bit, then you'll see that this this uh, joint here, the shoulder joint, it detaches super simple. And so you'll see that in just a moment. brisket up a little bit more. Like I said, be super careful down in there. You get to slicing too fast, you'll put some unwanted holes in there. Cause a headache for a taxidermist. Or might cost you some extra money too. That's too bad. At least we'll know who to blame on this one, right? So, as you can see, I've got most of this shoulder exposed pretty good. And um, what I'm going to do is right up in here, I'm just going to go in there and find that shoulder blade, and I'm going to detach it. Get a little bit more out of this front end here. down the neck if you need to. Just take your time. Um, I'm trying to rush just because of the video. And hopefully that doesn't bite me in the rear end. But just take your time. Go real slow and separate. You can actually see right now that this shoulder is fully exposed on the carcass. So I'm ready to detach this whole shoulder blade. You can still, you can see how that just opened right up. You're quartering the deer up anyways, so as well go on ahead and do it like this in my opinion just make sure you don't cut the hide so now I've got the shoulder detached I'm just going to do a little soft skinning right here working that hide right down the leg keep a hold of it like I said it's a lot simpler when you have somebody hanging on the deer for you but <clears throat> to a point just in a second where I'll be able to pull them right through. You gotta hang on to them too. They, they'll get away from you and then fall down and you have a bunch of leaves to pick off. Hopefully I'm still in the camera here for you guys. Let's see if I can turn a little bit. But you can see all this skin is intact. You don't have to worry about cutting in the right place. And right there you can see we're at where I made the first incision on the deer itself. And all I'm gonna do in just a second is take and pull them right out of there. Lay that front shoulder up there. I'm gonna do the other side just the same. Be careful. I already got a little hole there that I'm gonna have to tend to. It might be far enough back where it's not a problem, but 
So same thing. You can see the neck just coming over, coming down like a t-shirt. You want to be careful around that neck too. Just working it down. Right there. Right where the skin folds over is where you want to just focus your knife blade. Just take your time. I probably should slow down. I wish I had some somebody to grab a camera here and they could uh, get in here tight and show you what I'm talking about, but just take your time going down. Now, I'm far enough down now that I don't really care. That's what I'm talking about. Look at that. I got on that sucker. And the best way, I didn't do it like this a while ago, but when you go to cut into that shoulder, just go into like the armpit. So right there, cut that connective tissue and just go into the armpit rather than over the top of it. And just look for that shoulder blade, like I said. Cut it out of there. This shoulder might not be much to harvest or much to salvage on. Saved the uh, the processor a little work there making that in the hamburger. All right, so now I got the second shoulder opened up, and this one's gonna be super slick for me. But again, just work it down it's like taking a sock off slowly, working that connective tissue right there on the edge. Just take your time. You can see that hair starting to expose. That's where I made that initial incision. And you see it almost even jumps out of there on you. And then I can just pull up that one little piece. Pull it right out, and there's shoulder number two. Now, to your neck, super simple. You wanna just take an, uh, a lot of taxidermist, like some neck left in there. Me personally, I don't care for a lot of neck left in there. It takes it a lot longer to thaw out if you put it in the freezer. When guys bring it to me in the freezer. So I'll work it all the way down to that last joint. Um, now, like I said, there's a lot of opinions out there on not getting the right measurement, but um, I've done it every which way. And this is just the way I like to do it. I'm gonna work this hide all the way down to the atlas and the axis, which is where the spine and the skull meet. That's the last joint, and that's where I'm gonna detach it. Might take me a few minutes, so I'll probably pause the video and jump back in here in just a second. little tip real quick when you're skinning this thing out reach up under there grab a grab a hold of a chunk of that hide and pull it away from the carcass and then you'll be able to see that membrane when it's tight it, it'll easily separate and it'll keep that uh, blade from as easily slicing where you don't want to slice I'm being a little bit peculiar here and keeping a lot of the connective tissue on the carcass just because like when you tan these guys you want to you have to leave the, you have to flesh that out anyway so the more work I can do right here the less work I got to do on the hide itself another thing I'm gonna share with you right now that is a pain in the butt for a taxidermist is when guys let these antlers get blood all over them. The best thing you can do with these antlers 
is go ahead and rinse them off. If you're getting blood all over them, try to keep the blood off of them, honestly. But try, if you get blood on there, try to rinse them suckers off because it's just like, it can be a pain to get that blood off sometimes. And then if you start having to use like a mild detergent or something, you might take some of the, if he's got like where he's been rubbing or something, you know, he just, you're gonna kind of get into taking some of that natural look out of it. But um, the best thing to do is to prevent getting the blood on there. As you see, this neck is starting to taper down now. I'm getting into that last joint. And this right here, is where it's really helpful to have the partner, but I'm gonna attempt it solo. And hopefully yep, I won't give you guys too much of a comedy show. But I'm getting down in there, I can I can feel his lower jaw. I'm right up in here where the, the throat area is. I'm at the last joint. So you gotta be careful here too when you go in there to cut that joint free. You don't want to detach or you don't want to cut hide. But make sure all of the hide is detached from the carcass itself. It's gonna be totally so now all I got left with hide on it is the head itself. And I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna take, you want a good sharp knife. I like to use a good strong steel blade like this for, I mean, you've seen, I've used the same blade the whole time. I'm gonna cut through the neck, find that joint and detach it. If I need to do a little chopping, this will act like a hatchet. A great knife right here. This is just a little buck skinner. Had it for probably 12 years or so. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and you can see he's already starting to loosen up on me there don't worry he ain't gonna fall you're gonna have to you're gonna have to work it a little bit but beats the hell out of trying to get a saw here comes the blood let's go ahead and make a nice cut all the way around that neck everything free I'm gonna change gloves before I grab hold of the antlers just because of what I was just talking to you about I don't want um, I don't want all that blood getting on my antlers this this is the area where I always when it when you think you've cut enough just go on ahead and cut a little bit more because there's still a little bit in there ideally I would have somebody here helping me out but I don't so that's where you just got to kind of get in there and start doing a little twisting Somebody hanging on to him. There you go, though. I cut most of the tissue off and just snapped that last joint. And this hide has been detached without any incisions except for this one that you see here and the ones at the bottom of the last joint on the legs. So you basically have like a, a t-shirt effect for your cape, for your taxidermist. He will not complain about that. All right guys, see ya.